if you're watching live, thank you so, so much for taking the time to join me today. My name is Dorothy Spira, and I am part of Evernote's social media marketing team. I have been working with Evernote or for Evernote for about three years, but I've been working with Evernote and using Evernote since 2010. I actually was introduced to Evernote in college. Um, I graduated from the University of New Orleans, and I was in a class one day, and I saw this girl taking notes, but she was like taking notes in one app and then or one page and then switching to a different page and taking notes there and like switching to something else, but all within the same application instead of having like a million Word documents across her entire screen. And I was like, I have to know what that is. So I pulled her aside after a class and I made her meet me at the library later that day and teach me about Evernote. And now I'm teaching you. So before we jump in, I do want to make sure you guys know that premium service is currently half off for college students, so be sure to take advantage of that. A bit later, we're going to talk about some features that are premium specific. So when it comes to preparing for exams and writing term papers and all the other fun stuff college brings with it, some features that are premium specific will kind of enhance that experience for you. So just keep that in mind as we chat today. So there are a lot of different methods of taking notes. There's the Cornell method, the outline method, there's a million of them. I highly recommend, especially if you have some prep time before your semester begins, to research the different methods out there and find whatever works best for you. There's a lot of really tried and true ways of doing it. And there's even, if you have your own way, that's totally cool. But if you have time, Google it. There's some really cool stuff out there. So today, we're going to focus on the different ways of getting your notes and research into Evernote outside of just opening a blank document and typing. So a big component to digital note taking, as well as handwriting, um, is consistency. You want to format your notes the same way across all of your classes so that you always know where to find key information, exam dates, the topic, whatever it is. So this is where note templates are really going to come in handy. We have a few existing templates that you can use, and I'll share a link to those in the description of the event after the event ends. It'll be a note link, um, so you can save it to your Evernote account. Uh, but you can use these templates as is, or you can customize them, or you can make your own. But let me show you how templates work. So I like to keep all of my templates together in their own notebook. And if you're new to Evernote and you don't know what a notebook is, that's okay. We're going to dig into that a little bit later. But I like to keep all of mine in their own templates notebook. If you decide to use a different template for each class and not keep it consistent against my recommendation, uh, you could keep it in your class notebook. It's completely up to you how you want to do this. But in this case, I would open my templates notebook. I would right click on the desired template, select copy to notebook, choose the class or the notebook the notes are for, go to that notebook and voila, there is my template and the notebook ready to go. So the note is prepped, it's ready for the day's lecture. All you have to do is fill in the information, which is kind of peace of mind in and of itself. So templates are really great for digital note taking, but what about classes, if they still exist, that don't let you have, there were when I was there, that don't let you have um, laptops or tablets, or if you just prefer to handwrite notes, the in-app scanning feature for iOS and Android is really going to be your best friend for handwritten notes. So let me show you what that looks like. So all you have to do is open the mobile app, tap and hold the plus icon, and then tap the camera icon that pops up, and this will bring up the actual camera. Hold it over the notes you're looking to scan, and it helps if you have a contrasting background to so whatever color paper it is that you're scanning. But the app will auto detect the page and scan it. And you can save this to whatever notebook you want. Um, or you can just hit save and not worry about whatever notebook it's in for now. Because one of the big pluses of in app scanning is that it, Evernote makes your handwriting searchable. So this handwritten note that you're taking a picture of is now searchable. So you don't have to frantically flip through your notebook that you like are trying to find that one name and you have all these pages of notes and you know you have it somewhere. You just search whatever it is and Evernote will pull it right up. It's amazing. Let me show you what it looks like. So let's do a search for the page we just scanned. Since I don't remember what notebook I saved it to, but I do remember that I wrote the word student, so we're gonna go ahead and try that. And there's my note, and there's the word student. Uh, let's try a different word just for kicks. 
boom, there it is. I know, it's searching handwriting to me. I've been working for Evernote for three years. Searching handwriting to me is still like magic. You just search the keyword you're looking for and the app will not only find the note that it's in, but it'll also find the exact location. So even if it's a really long note, it'll highlight the location for you. It's the best when it comes to studying or writing a paper because you know it's somewhere, but you don't know exactly where. Boom, it'll tell you where. Okay, I'm gonna stop geeking out. So the feature, the in-app scanning feature is really great for handouts too. So not as just handwritten notes, but paper like your professor gives you your class uh, itinerary or required reading. You can also scan these things. Scan it into Evernote so that you can access it from any device, search for keywords, or even if you are a culprit for losing handouts, scan it, and then even if you lose the paper copy, you still have it digitized and saved somewhere you can access it. Amazing. You can also use it for scanning whiteboards. So if your professor is drawing a chart on the board and you're like trying to listen and take notes but also draw, don't worry about it. Scan it with your phone and then take notes as is, and you can always merge the notes later. So let's talk a little bit more about information you're getting from your professor or information you need to save that isn't considered a traditional note. So things like online research for a paper or articles on the web or emails you're getting from your professor. There's two Evernote feature features that are gonna help you out here. There's the Evernote Web Clipper and then, your, then there's your, ooh, can't talk, your incoming Evernote email address. And that's different than an email address you would use to say log into the app. So let's start with the Evernote Web Clipper. The Web Clipper is a browser extension that's like, that lets you save articles and websites to your Evernote account. If you're not familiar with, with a browser extension, it's a plugin that expands the functionality of your browser. So by browser, I mean Safari, Chrome, Firefox, whatever you're using. It's really great for when you're in the research phase of a paper and you want to collect as much information as possible. So you'll have a few options on how you can actually save that information. So here's the Web Clipper. You can choose Article, which will automatically detect the main section of the website. You can choose Simplified Article, which will clear out all the formatting and layout of the website you're viewing and just keep kind of the meat of what you're looking at. You can use full page, which will save a static copy of the entire page. It doesn't strip anything out like the simplified article did. Or you can use my personal favorite, which is selection. And this will only clip the part of the website that you highlighted. It is awesome, awesome, awesome. I love this because maybe I don't want to fluff through the article. I already found the meat of what I needed. Just highlight it and clip only that part. And once the information is clip to your Evernote account, you'll notice that the note saves the original URL where you found the content. So it's really awesome when it comes to time to write the bibliography or if you wanna see if this website has more information about the part that you clipped or something else that's kind of related, you can use that to find other helpful content. So the other feature I mentioned outside of the Web Clipper was the incoming Evernote email address. So your incoming Evernote email address will allow you to forward emails into your Evernote account and save them as notes. Your emails will be saved as notes. What's great is you can notate in the subject line of the email what notebook you want the email to save to. So that means you can forward emails you're getting from your professor or like a group project, save it all in your Evernote account and you don't have to worry about it getting lost in your inbox. You can keep it saved and organized per class and like I talked about or we'll talk about, you can have a notebook just for emails if you want to. Um, but let's look at, you can find rather details on how to use your incoming Evernote email address after the event is over in the description box. All right, if you are just joining us, first of all, thank you for watching. Um, my name is Dorothy and today I'm talking about different ways Evernote can help you stay organized and get the most out of your notes in college. Now, some of the features we already covered, uh, like forwarding emails into your Evernote account we were just talking about, or um, attaching content like PDFs to your notes, these are premium service features, but premium service is half off for students right now. So make sure you take advantage of that discount so you're able to get the most of out of all these tools that we're talking about today. Okay, so we've covered different ways of keeping your notes consistent, uh, different ways of getting 
the information that you want to save into Evernote, like your emails or your paper notes or your handwritten notes. But now I want to talk a little bit about how to organize them. So you have two main options for organizing. Notebooks, like I mentioned earlier, or tags. Um, I'm going to show you what each of those look like because some people like notebooks better than tags, vice versa, and some people use both. So I really want you to understand each of them. So organizing your notes by notebook is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You can have one notebook for each of your classes, much like you would have a physical notebook for each of your classes, or and you can organize the notes into each of those classes accordingly. Um, so let's say your art history notes would go into your art history notebook, your econ notes would go into your econ notebook. Mm, you get the picture. This is pretty obvious. It's a really simple way of keeping your notes in your classes organized. Now, if having one notebook per class feels too broad for you, you could choose to have a stack of notebooks per class. So for example, your art history class could have a notebook per topic. So you could have a Roman art notebook, a medieval art notebook, a modern art notebook, a notebook just for research for a paper, a notebook for just forwarding emails, whatever. All of these notebooks would then be organized into an art history stack. So let me show you what stacks looks like. Okay, here are all of my notebooks. As you can see, I have quite a few, but these are only in relation to two classes. So I'm gonna go ahead and create two stacks. All I have to do is drag and drop the notebooks on top of the other to create a stack. You can click twice on the stack to rename it, and then they'll each be grouped according to the classes that they're a part of. So now in the left sidebar, you can see I have my art history notes and my econ notebooks organized, and you can collapse and expand them as needed. Now, if this feels overwhelming, you can scale back, keep it to one notebook per class, and then just rely on the search tool to refine whatever you're looking for, as long as it's all organized in one notebook per class. Now, if organizing by notebooks already feels overwhelming, much less stacks, or if you rather just brain dump everything into one place and not worry about keeping it organized, tags are gonna be your absolute best friend. So tags are keywords like hashtags that you can attach to a note and they can be as broad or as specific as you like. Honestly, I recommend using both broad and specific tags. So let's go back to the article we clipped a moment ago. You'll notice at the top of the note, at the top of the note it reads, click to add tags. Here, I'm gonna add two tags, one for the class it's linked to and one for exactly what it is. Now when I'm searching, I can choose to see everything tagged with art history or I can refine it to see everything tagged with art history and research. To summarize, you can organize your notes by using notebooks, tags, or both. It really depends on how you work. I'm actually partial to using both. I lean on tags, but I organize in notebooks. That's kind of the beauty here. There's no right way, there's no wrong way. It's all about how you best collect and absorb the information that you're putting into Evernote. If tags feel really clunky, try notebooks. If you're working with notebooks and it feels like too much work, try tags. If college is overwhelming enough and it feels all feels like too much work, just rely on search. As long as you're keeping all of your notes and your research and your paper handouts and your handwritten notes all in one place, you can have peace of mind that it's saved and you know exactly where it is and you can access it from anywhere. So whether you're on your phone, your personal computer, the computer in the library, just go to evernote.com, log into your account, boom, there are your notes. Literally anywhere. It's all in one place. You can access it from there. Okay, so we covered different ways of getting your notes and research into Evernote. We talked about different ways of organizing these notes to get the most out of them. I know that's a lot of information. We are almost done, but there's a few more features I wanna make sure you guys know about that I do think they're gonna help you get the most out of all this work you're putting into your notes and get the most out of the coursework so that when you're studying, it's a little bit easier. Uh, so first, I want to talk about shortcuts. Adding a shortcut to a note or a notebook is like favoriting or bookmark, bookmarking it. So there's, if there's a note you're accessing a lot or you need to get to quickly, um, just drag it to your shortcuts list. Boom, in my shortcuts list. So examples of things you might want to add to your shortcuts are maybe class itineraries, a list of all of your exam dates or due dates, a running to-do list, 
a paper you're working on, just a note for brain dumping, anything you feel like you want to access often or quickly, add to your shortcuts. And you can always change whatever you put in the shortcuts list. So after you turned in the paper, remove it from your shortcuts and put in whatever your next big project is. Um, you can also take advantage of the reminder tool for things that have due dates like papers or your exams. So the reminder tool, you can add a specific date and time or date or time to your notes and it will alert you to remind you. So if you have a paper that's due, maybe set an alert a week or two in advance or a day or two if you're feeling risky and it will alert you and say, hey, yo, you need to work on this. It's really cool. So just take advantage of the reminder tool as well. Okay, so throughout this whole video or whatever, you've heard me talk about the search tool. So I want to dig into that just a little. Um, you can use the search tool in the most obvious way and just search the keyword that you're looking for. But we also have what's called the search syntax, and that'll really help you refine the search results. So that'll help you find notes in a certain notebook with a specific attachment, with a particular tag, kind of like you saw earlier. Um, I'm going to share a link in the description box after the live event ends with additional information about everything I've talked about here, like search syntax. And it's going to have step-by-step -step guide for whatever device you're using. So if you're using Windows, iOS, Android, Android, you can find how to do these things on your specific device. Okay. So we talked about getting content into Evernote, whether it's your personal notes, paper, handwritten. Uh, we talked about different ways of organizing your notes into different notebooks and tags. We talked about other features like shortcuts, reminders. We talked about a lot. Keep in mind that some of these things, not all of them, but some of them are premium service features and you want to take advantage of your student discount, half off premium service. I don't want to sound like a car salesman. I probably do. But I just want to make sure you guys take advantage of the discount while you can. A lot of people that aren't students want this discount, <laughs> so just use it while you can. Um, if you have any questions at all about what we're talking about or what I've talked about today, or if you run into trouble, you can leave a comment on this video. I'll get back to you. You can tweet us at Evernote Helps. If you get premium service, you can live chat a support rep and get help then and there. But Whatever, if you have any questions, just let us know, because I know this is a lot, especially if you're new to Evernote. Uh, but thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Happy studying. Good luck this semester. I will see you next time.